I've realized I haven't had in a while is my one-on-one -on -one alone time. And that's something that I really value and try to prioritize in my life because I think if you can learn to love your own company and be your own best friend, then you are genuinely unstoppable. And that's always how I feel whenever I do spend time by myself. So this morning I worked out, I did a cycling class. It felt so good. I just picked up this little smoothie and I decided that I'm going to have a little me day. I'm clearing the schedule. I have no business doing that, but it can wait. This is important to me today because I feel like it's been a while since I've reconnected with myself, which sounds dramatic, but I feel like my energy has just been everywhere else with work stuff, personal life stuff. And I don't know, I feel like I haven't prioritized myself in a little bit. I'm gonna get in a better balance with things, which I know will happen. You know, sometimes the balance gets thrown off, but today I'm gonna show you how to be your own best friend and what I like to do when I spend time with myself. So I made a little plan for myself today because you know, you gotta treat yourself like you would treat one of your closest friends, one of your favorite people. Plan a little day for yourself. It's all of my favorite things that I haven't really done in a while. And I, in general, I just haven't really spent that much time by myself lately, which I really missed. I know the idea of doing things alone can be very daunting, especially if you haven't done it before, because that was me and I was so scared to do things alone. I was scared of how I'd feel. I was also scared of what I thought. I was scared of judgment from other people because I thought for some reason that was a thing. But my first tip, if you want to, you know, have a little more independence and start going on your own a little bit. I think doing things that you know you really enjoy is really nice because if you do something brand new, that's already a lot of change. So doing something you're already familiar with doing, you already enjoy by yourself is like a good little step. And in terms of judgment from other people, I've just completely stopped caring about that because I know for me, when I see someone doing something alone, I'm always like, ugh, go you. You are so powerful and independent. Love to see it. Never have I once seen someone sitting alone in a restaurant or you know at the beach by themselves and been like oh they're probably so lonely i've never thought that so i need to stop assuming that people feel that way when they see me alone I am about to get some, I was about to say breakfast, but I had a little bit of a late start to my day. So I'm gonna get some lunch by myself. It's something that probably was my hardest thing to conquer was eating a meal alone. For some reason that was just like so daunting to me and I still have yet to do that with dinner, but I'm really proud of myself for being able to do that with like breakfast and lunch for me. For some, for some reason, it's just less intimidating than doing like a dinner alone, which if you can do that, just know you hold so much power in my eyes <laughs> and you are so cool. But I started off small. For me, this is how I made it make sense in my head. So when I wanted to eat meals by myself, I first started off by going to cafes because cafes are not intimidating. I feel like there's a very welcoming vibe. You know, there's usually people studying, doing work in there alone, so it's not that weird. And then I graduated from that to going to like little outdoor restaurants for some reason The whole indoor restaurant thing was more intimidating to me and now as of recently I've been doing like indoor restaurants by myself, which is still a little bit scary. It you know Raises the heartbeat a little bit, but I'm doing the dang thing I don't know. It's nice to make plans with yourself And it's also nice to not have to rely on going with somebody else to do something that you want to do because whether or not someone's available. There's just all these like variables with hanging out with other people, which I love hanging out with other people. And I love sharing meals with people too. But sometimes it's nice to just know that at any given point in time, you can do whatever you want to do and you don't need the company of someone else because then it frees you to do whatever you want, whenever you want and not have to rely on someone else. All right, enough chit chat. Let's go do the dang thing. There's an age when no one looks at that impressed 
All right, next stop. This one's a little bit tempting for me, but I love to go book shopping alone. I'm gonna try my best not to go too crazy because you guys already know my issues with buying books and then not reading them for a long time, whatever. But I have been wanting to go on a little book shopping moment for a minute now, so I'm very excited. Okay, mission success. I did not buy any more books, even though it was very tempting because I still have so many more that I have that I haven't read yet. So I wanna make sure that I'm reading those before I get any new ones. But I went in there because I wanted to see if they had Colleen Hoover's new book. They didn't, <laughs> but I came home, I went to the mail room and I forgot I had pre-ordered it on Amazon. It's It starts with us. It's the prequel to It Ends With Us. But I'm also feeling really happy because I didn't realize that there's a new version of the Verity book, which if you haven't read Verity, it's one of my all time favorite books. It is so messed up and dark and twisted. And I just, it was a crazy read. I didn't realize that she released another Verity book, but this one has an exclusive extra chapter that kind of wraps up the story because it kind of just ends and you're like, okay, manuscript or letter, what happens next? What is going on? It kind of ends really abruptly. And so I went in there today and I saw that book and I spent like 30 minutes just standing and like reading that last chapter, which was very satisfying because I felt like it answered a lot of my questions. So anyway, overall, a very solid bookstore experience. What needs to happen now is I need to make myself a matcha because the one I had at that little cafe restaurant was not what I was expecting. And I just feel like the ones I make here at home are amazing. So I'm gonna make myself one of those. It's funny because obviously I live alone and you would think that because I live alone, I naturally just spend a lot of time with myself and I definitely do, but I feel like for me, it's just not intentional. And so that's why I like to have little days like this or moments like this, whatever I can fit in, because obviously it's not always reasonable to have a whole day to yourself you know, because we all have busy lives and schedules and things, but I really try to make intentional time of spending time alone because me just like existing around my apartment, doing my day-to-day -day things isn't very intentional. And so naturally I do spend a lot of time alone because I live alone, but I really try to make an effort to do stuff like this, have days like this, little moments here and there where how many times am I gonna say the word intentional because I don't have any other words to substitute for it. I don't know. Magnifique. This is definitely hitting a lot more than the one I spent $7 on. Even moments like this, I really appreciate. I don't think to spend quality time with yourself, you always have to be doing something extravagant or you know, necessarily even leaving your house. I feel like quality time with yourself for everyone is gonna look different based on what you wanna do. Sometimes quality time is days like this and other days it's me rotting on my couch, watching countless hours of Vampire Diaries and Gossip Girl. I feel like you just have to find what works best for you and how you like to best spend time with yourself. The more I get older, the more I realize that prioritizing myself is not selfish. I think, you know, sometimes it could, yes, get to a selfish, selfish point because taking care of others is also really important. But I feel like at the core of it, when you can show up as the best version of yourself and take care of yourself, you can show up as the best version of you for other people. So it's kind of a win-win when you take care of yourself, you can take care of other people. There's a reason, there's a reason why on the airplanes they say put your oxygen mask on first before you assist others. Because if you can't help yourself, you can't help others. Or even just like if you can't take care of yourself, if you can't, you know, be kind to yourself, how can you expect to do that for others? So I don't know. I've gone through quite the journey with self-acceptance and liking who I am. It's been, you know, an up and down journey over the last few years. And I feel like the more time I connect with myself, the more I begin to 
accept and love myself more. And speaking of getting older, I'm literally turning 22 in a few weeks, which is insane. Sometimes I feel like I'm a teenager masquerading around as an adult. I definitely do feel like an adult. I have adult responsibilities. For the most part, I am pretty mature, but sometimes I'm still just like, what is going on? How did I get here? How am I suddenly 22? currently rotting in some afternoon rush hour traffic, but I'm having a great time listening to music. My windows were down. I'm going home to visit my parents and Coda for dinner tonight, which I'm really excited about. I try to go home once or twice a week. I started this vlog clip because I just remembered a while ago on my podcast. If you don't know, I have a podcast. I do. It's called On My Mind, and I very recently did an episode. I think it's titled how to become your own BFF and what I like to do alone. So if you like this whole topic, if you've been liking this video so far and you like podcasts, I feel like that would be a good one to listen to. Also, in other exciting news, I just officially bought my first car today. I made the payment for it. It was a little painful and she doesn't come in until I get back from my trip. This car is a lease, so my three years are up and I bought kind of my dream car. My dream car is a vintage Ford Bronco that's like refurbished and in a sage green, but that is $275,000. So not that dream car, but like my realistic dream car. so long so that needs to change here is my Shirley temple recipe it's very easy nothing too crazy I keep it pretty simple I know some people add orange juice into it I've never tried that I've seen your comments about adding a splash of orange juice I think that's how you guys are saying you guys do it either in Europe or Canada or both I don't know I'm definitely curious to try that but this is just how I've always drank Shirley temples I have been a Shirley temple little bitch since i was this big <laughs> so i just have such vivid memories of anytime we'd go out to a restaurant i'd be like can i have a shirley temple please and then because i was too shy to ask the waiter or waitress for extra cherries my sister would have to ask or my mom would ask for extra cherries because no restaurant is ever generous with them they either give like one or two maybe three and then someone would ask for me and they'd bring like a little bowl. To this day, I still cannot ask for extra cherries because that just, that's just far too much. All right, grab your cup of ice, grab your grenadine. The grenadine is the Shirley Temple flavoring. I eyeball this, you could just do like one teaspoon. And then I like to use little Sierra Mist. Some people use Sprite, some people use, use ginger ale. I think it just depends on your personal preference. My thing is I love sweet things. And so I kind of base off, like see, I already know looking at this that this is gonna be not enough. Cause I like my Shirley Temples to be kind of like a deep red. <laughs> If it's light pink, there's not enough. <laughs> and I plop a few of these bad boys in there. And then if you're of age, you can add some alcohol. I just use Tito's whenever I do add. And what I love about Shirley Temples is that the flavor of a Shirley Temple is so strong that if you add just enough grenadine, you will not be able to taste this, which is dangerous, but good. I, however, am not feeling saucy tonight. And I'm also trying to go to bed within the next like 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna have a kid's Shirley Temple today. Mm. Every time I make one of these, I'm like, why do I not make these 5,000 times a day? Well, I do know why, because I think all of my teeth would rot and fall out of my mouth, but it's just such a nice treat. Mm. 
I'm feeling a little stuck right now because you guys saw I just got this book today. But I also just started this book, which is the prequel for The Hunger Games, and I'm only this far into it. So nothing crazy, I'm like two chapters in, but I have been waiting for this book to come out for months and months, so I really wanna read it. But I already just started this one, but I'm not super far into it. So I think I'm gonna start this tonight. I will keep you all updated. I'm so excited to read this. Thanks for spending the day with me. That was so fun. I'm so glad you were here. I love your company. If you stayed till this point in the video, so I know who the real ones are, who watched till the end, comment down below. Maybe like a little drinky emoji, like the martini glass, that could be fun. This is your sign, start taking the little baby steps to becoming your own best friend. It is the best feeling and I promise you can get there. Also, let me know what your favorite thing to do alone is. I would love to know. It's time to get down to business. See ya.